Welcome back. In this video now, we'll have a look at the idea behind genetic algorithms, how they work, and how we actually try to find a solution. So, in a genetic algorithms, in a genetic algorithm, we start with a population of candidate solutions or possible solutions. I remember from the, from the last video, we talked about the search space and we said that we do not know uh, the values of all possible solutions, we all, but we only, we only know some of them, so only know a, we only know a subset of those solutions, right? So, this is our population now, that subset of uh, uh, possible solutions. We start with these candidate solutions, uh, we call them individuals or creatures or phenotypes, uh, to a problem, to a certain problem, so possible solutions to a certain problem, and then we evolve it towards better solutions. Each candidate solution has a set of properties in the chromosomes or the genotype which can be mutated and altered. So notice now we have one possible solution, right? And then we try to change its properties in order to try and make it a better solution. Notice now here we have mutation and alteration. Traditionally, but not necessarily always, Solutions are represented in binary, maybe as a binary string or a string of zeros and ones. But other encodings are also possible. So, for example, <coughs> we have can, we have this binary string, and it can be a solution to some problem. An example rep uh, representation is this. Let's say that we have this 10-bit string chromosome. So, uh, um, notice it's a binary string of of, of 10 bits. It represents a possible solution to a problem. Let's say uh, bits or subset subset of bits represent choice of some feature. Notice we, we spoke about the traits in the last video. So each each one of them, or maybe each subset of them, can represent some feature. Let's say, for example, uh, let's try and represent the choice of a mobile phone. Right. So this 10-bit string represents a mobile phone. The first two bits, the, fir the first and second, one, two, they represent the make, is it Nokia, is it Samsung, LG, or ZTE, so it can be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And then the third, fourth, and fifth one, they represent the color, maybe we can have eight, va eight colors now, right? The sixth one, the sixth bit, this one, can represent Wi-Fi, so yes or no, does the phone have Wi-Fi or not? Number seven, Bluetooth, yes or no, has it got well, uh, Bluetooth or not? And then eight, touch screen, yes or no, because it's one and zero. Nine, is it waterproof, yes or no. And number 10, does it have a front camera, yes or no. So notice this, we can represent a choice of a mobile phone using a binary string. This is just a simple example. Things hopefully will make sense when we uh, explain the operators more and then have a look at some Java implementation. Now. The evolution usually starts from a population of randomly generated individuals. As we said before, we can know some so possible solutions, so we'll randomly generate these possible solutions, and then uh, iteratively try and come up with better solutions. So we start from a population of randomly generated individuals, and is an iterative process though, so the evolution is quite iterative with the population in each iteration called a generation. So we have iterations, and in each iteration we have a certain population, we call it a generation. In each generation, the fitness of every individual in the population is evaluated. Notice now, the fitness is usually the value of the objective function in the optimization problem being solved. The fitness of every solution, of every possible solution of every individual, is evaluated so we check how good that solution is does it solve the problem how close it is to the actual solution or how close it is to the real solution uh, that we are looking for the most fit individuals are stochastically selected there's a bit of randomness here from the current population and each individual's genome is modified so if you remember these characteristics these details we modify them we try to change them in order to find a better solution. We can do recombination or maybe some random mutation to form a new generation. So we get rid of the weaker solutions, the one, the least 
uh, suitable solutions and then we try to do some recombination and uh, mutation to find better solutions the new generation of candidate solutions is then used in the next iteration of the algorithm so you notice now we have possible solutions uh, we check the fitness of each of them we try to come up with new solutions by doing these changes and then we create our next uh, population for the next iteration and the process continues until we find a solution now you must have uh, a question which is because the process is iterative when do we stop or how do we stop well commonly the algorithm terminates when either a maximum number of generations has been produced or a satisfactory fitness level has uh, been reached for the population so we need to have some way out of the uh, iteration or the iter iterative process maybe we can uh, say let's try 1000 generations maybe just an example or maybe we can say the fitness level should be for example 0.00001 that's how close the best solution is to the real solution or something like that anyway we need to have a way out we need to have a termination condition for the iterative process now two extremely important things when we try to use generative algorithms the first one is the representation how do we represent the solution to our problem so a genetic representation of the solution domain i.e the genotype will be different for a different problem domain so each problem can have a different representation this is very important to remember that when you have a new problem you have to think of a suitable solution of uh, um, I'm sorry suitable representation of the solution and then the second thing is the fitness function the fitness function is to evaluate each solution how good as we said to find out how good each solution is and the fitness function can be different for different problem domains so you have to think of uh, the fitness function a fitness function that is suitable to your problem these two items must be developed again whenever a new problem is specified well that means as, as i mentioned before that when you have a new problem you have to think of the best representation and the best fitness function uh, i think i'm going to stop here in the next video i'll start talking about genetic operators thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next video